Hey people, good morning to you, afternoon, whatever you're located, wherever you're located. Francis Scott Key Bridge Live. I've changed the tools to to any time, past hour, and look what shows up. You, um, 47 minutes ago, it says, uh, stars of fresh kills, whatever. Um, political power hour with Steve. What they did, these narratives that YouTube pushes to the top, in the description, they do fancy shit like this. Ladies from Francis Scott Key Bridge, right? Francis Scott Key Bridge. My description, um, I can put this in there all I want. It doesn't mean jack shit. I've already tried it. I will not get pushed up. Here is only 56, 55, second, 55 seconds. And this is the, uh, the title is J. Dave Vallow's Grandfather Speaks to KBV, I, uh, you know, TV, dash YouTube. And in that test is live, Chad Daybell trial, uh, this jury section day four, selection day four. Ladies and Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. This one, and you know, the, the, the Biden bar, new channel opening to re new channel opening to resume some shipping. And then something about Trump here. Well, let's go ahead and click on this, right? It's only one minute. It's only that long. Inch closer to opening arguments. Let's bring it up on YouTube. With JJ Vallow's grandfather, Larry Hold on, let me move that over. Let me shrink that screen for you. Oh, great. I've got that those damn intelligent mouse, mighty mouse, what we call it, and that damn thing uh, magnifies sometimes the wrong way. So let's do that. Yeah, that's weird, right? It went around a circle on that one. Sorry, I've got to figure out how to set this setting, this setting up. So there's their this transcript, right? So transcript, show transcript. There's a transcript, English. It is, there's all of it there. And then we move over to it. There's no comments. You can see it's KBV, KBVI News. See, YouTube did this thing, but it said they're going to, um, look at this, 2.89 thousand subscribers. Practically nothing at all. But this is a Channel 6 symbol of news. And they got pushed up, pushed up in the, in the search engine to uh, number three this little bit and this is looking for today for this topic and in here i'll jump forward no not once no reason to hear it not once they talk about the shipping channel that's the father grandfather um let me see if i can move this over to you a little closer there we go and they were near the end let's play it and we look forward to uh, the trial coming up see that nothing all right so there is nothing. This is nothing to do with, with the, the the, uh, the the this right here. This is what I should be seeing the live stream of this. Uh, of, oops. Let me pull it back up. This is what we should be seeing. And you think they would just put a barge underneath of it? We already know they can. A ship can hold it. Worst case, it can it bottom out. They got ships that sink and you flood them and then take the water back out of them. They got a whole lot of stuff that they can use, but they're not using that. They're using old tech. Just chop it up, move it over, and put it on a barge. Old tech. You know, nothing nothing fancy about their technology here. They're using brute force 1980s shit. All right? It's, people in the 1900, early 1900s had more intelligence in removing this than... Uh, this current, this current operation, they're just stumbling into it, stumbling into luck, stumbling into luck. I already did a video about how this looks on the on the floor because we see the collapse video. You know that these two are the deck is down here, and these two are intertwined with each other. That's where the steel's intertwined, intertwined, intertwined with each other. And that's the issue about how to you know cut it, bring it up. And they have much. They, they're bragging about their thousand ton crane. They got five, four, th four thousand, five thousand, six thousand ton cranes around the world. This is a nineteen seventy something crane that they're bringing out, out there. That thousand tonner, yeah, it can do a lot. All right, it can, it could do this just slow. They said they're gonna work around the clock. Yeah, I, I don't really see them working around the clock. Maybe they mean they're sitting on their asses if part, on part of that clock that they're working around. They're sleeping and resting and joking and laughing. But I looked at this nighttime vision, nighttime shots. Right there, look at it. You see them out there cutting it up? No, they're still out here masturbating on what to do. Um, oh, I meant meditating uh, on what to do. 
you know, I just have a sense of humor. Sorry, guys. It may be morbid. It may be whatever. But I'm having fun since YouTube is uh said that they suggest my content with uh pornography. So fuck it. These anyway. Um, and some of you sensitive people can't stand cursing. You probably curse your ass off in real life, but you want me to be your church, uh, your uh, your saint. I am not your saint. I don't claim to be a saint. You don't support this channel financially, so. You know, there's no reason for me to listen to you. If I want to curse, I'm going to curse. If YouTube wants to delete the channel, delete it. I don't give a shit. You know, they've already quieted my voice anyway. So, back to this. Um, I mean, I'll miss a lot of you guys. But you know, I have other Rumble and I have the other channels still on YouTube. They have to delete both of them. Just so if you're listening, YouTube, don't forget to delete my other channel also. I have two of them. So, actually, I think I have four. So, don't forget to clean house. Get them all. Clean them all out. Don't fuck around. Do it, do it right. All right? You know my IP address. Just you know, addresses I use, even though I'm using a VPN sometimes. Just find the... You do it that way. Clean it out. I'll help you out with that. Don't, don't silence me half-ass. Do a better job of it. You guys suck, you liberals. You suck at trying to even do this. So anyway... Um, do, you see the, do you see the sparks flying, is what I'm saying? Do you see the spark flying from them cutting? It's daylight now. It's clear enough for us to see. It's kind of misty over the water here, the cloudy, overcast. Maybe it's some rain there. I don't know if that water is that's looking like rain. But do you see them out there cutting? Excavator could cut. It doesn't give a shit about the... Uh, wow, what a view. It doesn't give a shit about the uh, rain. You can work an excavator in the rain. Cutting steel. Um... Okay, so nothing there, and then some of the, oh, the background crane. This crane compression pulls it in so much that one time I saw a ship in a canal, and I was like, what the hell am I looking at? Is that on that ship? It just pulled, somebody photographed the ship, and the crane's way in the background on the shore. Now it's shrunk out. This time, i got to really set these these mices, this micey, this mice setting the mouse. Um, so, I mean... This, they've had this on the barge for days now. Where the hell is it? Let me back up. This piece here, it looks like it's on the barge. I can't quite make out, but it looks like it's cut. Ah, oh, shit, it's gone. It's so small. Right here. That's George in the background. He's scratching his head. And I'm scratching my leg like a maniac. Oh. All right, so, we're both scratching. Look at that piece. They have one, two, three, four cranes out here. Are they going to tempt the... Georgie, hold on, dude. Hold on. Are they going to tempt... Oh, fuck fuck was that? Woo! Sorry guys, I, I uh, managed to get static electricity or something. My skin's too dry. Oh, winter time, I'm, I suffer from uh, evaporation. So, uh, are they going to attempt to try to lift this to Georgie? Hold on. At one time, this would be very, very interesting to see this thing, uh, them do that. They're not going to cut it, or are they? Or are they using as? Are these are securement while they cut? Huh. I don't like that idea. You're trying to take too much bite of an apple with your calculations, and we know how most engineers are. They overconfident. I said it'd be conservative, and then you get you, then you somebody wound up dead, and we know that about the FIU bridge. We know that about Champlain Towers. We know that about this. Road waterway here that they thought that we can just put those little teeny dolphins in there and everybody's gonna it's gonna deflect. It's, incidentally, it's really not designed for impact. It's round, right? It's not trying to crumple zone anything. It's designed to deflect and put your ass back in the channel or make sure you don't go and go towards that structure. But it's just the timing that they they rotated after the dolphin after the dolphin position. That's that pile there in the water. And before the bridge. It's just shit luck timing. And also it could be that the chain could have grabbed it. I still leave that open. That it, uh, we, I don't know where that chain is anchored. I wish they would show that. They did all this underwater surveying. Why don't they show the anchor? I want to know where that fucking anchor is. Nobody else is asking that at this point. But that anchor is going to tell a lot about how that ship maneuvered into the position it did. Now, if the anchor never made it down, you know, there's a dropping anchor technique and there's a lowering the anchor. Lowering the anchor is, 
I don't see them getting that lowering that anchor in time, but it at the lower 50 feet plus the length. It's it's a dead low too that helps with this uh, anchoring, lowering out more anchor. So it just it just it drops down and drapes also, not just like like you might imagine, like it's hooked here and then it hooks here, tension all the way that way. Now it drops down and so much line is fed line, uh, chain is fed out, and it, it, they got ratios on it for for it, um, easy to find if you want to look them up on how much anchor do you have to put out to hold X ship each ship. This is a moving vessel. This is not a still vessel when they uh, when they drop anchor, and it's, so it's a little bit different here. Um, and I just I'm not sold. I, it might have slowed it down. It might even cause it to road spin that way. But I I want to say those thrusters were kicked in. As I understand, these thrusters might be electric, and the power came back on to some degree. I don't know if that's George. If that's enough generator. The, the way the, the ship is set up, I mean, I have not researched. I keep wanting to research the sister ship, so we can look at this thruster system, how it works. It's um, the, what I did try to find. I did try to find the sister ships uh, on a general search, the uh, the engines and all. Yes, you guys sent me links, and I'm familiar with that one guy that's posting. He's a uh, an engineer on the sh on a ship that he's posting now. I have only saw the one video. I contacted him. Waiting for them to reach back to me before I share his content. I did tell him that, look, if I make any money on it, just so you know, I'm going to share your content. Come after me. Get the money. You can you can monetize my crap. I, I tell it to a lot of people that I use their stuff without permission first. Or I tell them that I'm going to do it and you can come get it. You know, so it's no loss to you. Just put monetize over it. I won't, I won't argue it. Um, interesting doing that. Everyone that I've ever said that to, it's on you. You got it, baby. It's all yours. Everyone I've ever told that. I, I highlight myself and tell them what I'm going to do. And you come and get it, monetize it. You don't have to delete the content. It's advertising. It's marketing for you and your channel. And um, come and get it. You know, monitor, put a monetization over top of it. So, um, you know, in other words, you can claim it as their content. And um, I'm good to go, even though I might have other content tied to it. And even though I could dispute it under my fair use and publishing as a news um, channel also, I could keep it. But I know the hard work guy went made his own video up. I'm going to use a significant amount of it. It's his content. It's I'm not like the other news publications that says, well, I'm using it under fair use, so fuck you. I'm taking your, your content from you. No, no, I'm saying, look. I think I'm using a significant amount of your hard work and your intellect, so it you you own it if you, it's yours. As far as I'm, you know, is what I'm saying to them. You can come get it. And again, no one, everyone's not no one. Everyone's told me it's yours. You know, enjoy. Thanks for uh, giving me a shout out. Including this company out of Pennsylvania does the uh, Bolt connections and all that. They were so impressed. They were like, "Wow, you're the only one that asks." Yes, please use all the content you want. And I'm going to do a video on it, roll bolts and all that. They gave me access to it, you know, that permission um, some time ago. So I just keep forgetting to go back to it and do it for you. But I can use their content. That's awesome of them. Um, and, they, and he did say in the comments, like, you know, people just use our content without, you know, ever asking. You're like the first person. So, um, and it's a big business. So, you know, anyway, um, this looks presents as the, the the way they're cutting it up, which is I have to say that's pretty that's pretty that's pretty sweet what they're doing here. They're grabbing the nodal area, the, the gusset plate, the nodal area of all the intersecting steel, securing it somehow, cutting away the steel and then lifting it away. And it looks like they're putting it on a barge, or this thing is still connected and they dropped a couple of pieces. And I'm just seeing it wrong. Like this could be back connected here, and they just cut this and this, and then the structure, George. What's up, dude? You're getting frisky. He's starting to eat my paper. I need this for work. So, um, George, it's not food. Come on, dude. That tastes like glue anyway, doesn't it? It's a postum. So, um, oh, I did a joke already. Never mind. I did my joke for you. Let's have something else. Um, oh, shit. I got a lot of work left today. What do we have here? The... So there you have it. All right, there you have. This might be still connected. I think it is. I think they just chopped out the outer face. And this 
might have been in that position or the weight of it might have rolled back over. So maybe my saying they're intelligent, maybe I maybe this isn't on a barge and I'm looking at it wrong. I've never been able to get a close shot or a drone shot from this. I've been waiting days for this. This has been like this for three, four days considering this is a live video right now, but playback, so it's uh, an hour and 30 minutes ago approximately. So the, uh, yeah, so I thought that was brilliant a second ago, but now, you know, in, high, in retrospect, um, this still might be part of connected to the structure. Wait a minute, it's, it's, it's K-shaped. You know, and it's not a K, K, K design, but it's more K. I really can't make this out, but I, I like the idea if they can grab this nodal area and chop, chop. Like, so let, let this stay in um, cantilever, but not enough where it bends over. This puts this a lot of tension on this member if it's cantilevering out. The steel is huge, guys. It's not as small as this, TV, as this screen you're looking at. It's friggin' huge. So, you know, like, um, chop. That releases that. You observe it. Secure this. And then, of course, they have to cut and chop. Now it leans back more in the crane. This is connected multiple ways here and here, multiple cranes. So you're less load on it. You've got the load calculations on it, how much it weighs. But it's probably going to swing. You're going you're gonna to pull some away here, but not holding much. So maybe bring the, the connection further in with the other crane. So both of them sort of in, but a, uh, there's, a, there's a chain. Even I have it, multiple versions of it. It can change the load distribution. It locks it with a, a lock up here that won't allow it to pivot because it can't, it can't come closer together. Um, there's a chain you can use that will, will do that, a spreader bar type deal that won't allow it to pivot so you're getting the, your load distribution where it won't, where it won't rock. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a theoretical guess initially how much where you put it. So it will rock somewhat, but you got to be able to, the margin of safety has to be that, okay, let's just say all the load goes onto one crane. You don't want the crane tipping over, so that load needs to be able to, it needs to be able to take that whole load. The other crane is just to allow it to slowly go to the other crane, not be a, a pendulum. Pendulum. I always put a G in there by mistake. Pendulum. Pendulum. What the hell? So anyway, to swing into the, uh, huh. I used to have a problem with ambulance also. And not alligator. Everybody's like, you say, say alligator when I would always say ambulance wrong. And I was like, Alligator. And they're like, huh. And there's one more word I would get. I would, uh, and that was a true mess up as a little kid. I would get it wrong. I think uh, one of my siblings used to say it that way, and I picked up from him. So uh, right here, cut, cut this guy here. And now, again, the safety margin is that the uh, crane, considering this is not already on a barge, which I'm, I'm, I'm more leaning it's not, and this is a bow in it. So when you release that, it's going to want to roll to the right, which you can't do because the tension's here and here and compression on this one. Um, how much compression was on that one? It's a lot more load than it's... Well, it doesn't have the deck load on it anymore because that was a, a member that was, I think, just a tension member. And they, they, they transfer tension to compression as you ride down depending on where it is, but... It's significantly, it's a it's a member designed for hanging the structure. Uh, this is the pass. This is the uh, through truss. So you drive through this truss. So the deck is under here. Let's just go forward. I don't want to bore you too much. Oh, that's beautiful. So they they determined that this part of the structure is safe to be on. That's awesome. Which tells you what? Hey. We're talking about building the canal section now, not replacing this unless it's really that bad. But you're like in for a penny, in for a pound. Mm, I don't know. I think we see how strong, badass this steel is. I think it's time to load test the structure. That's with bladders or tractor trailers or whatever, you know. Load test them. And I find it amazing they're still using humans to, in the trucks that you're load testing a structure and you ask, you ask a human to drive onto the bridge while you load test it. If it fails, the human's dead. Well, they, they got remote operated stuff now. Why not just use remote operated stuff here? All right, they got remote remote operated excavators, all this stuff. They can load test it with with the Mac, you know, bumper to bumper equipment. Frankly, load testing with tractor trailers is unfair too. But unless you got wall to wall tractor trailers, you need dump trucks. Dump trucks are one of the better ones because they've got the load closer together on the tires. But you don't want that extra wheel down. You don't want that distributed load. You want how it might be um, loaded. 
and the, the dump truck's going to give them a lot more loading on the structure. And then let it sit there. Since they're going to be here over a week, put, the, put it on there and monitor it. If it doesn't creep and, and fracture or anything else over that time, the structure's good. It's, you don't fix it. It's not broke. All right? This isn't broke. The, the, looking at that concrete on that ship, this is not broke. They should be building a new span. That's it. And then put some more dolphins in and... And, you know, maybe they got to keep an escort uh, escort out there uh, for backup safety reasons because you'd have to dolphin all around this bitch, right? And then you have to tell the ships that you got to figure out what's the maximum speed any ship's going to do. And, and theoretically, can you stop it? It's theoretical. I, I, we know it will stop it, a damn bridge falling on a, on a ship like that, a container ship. But what also would help out is, is the, uh, this guy here, a uh, tugboat. But then if the tugboat goes to pushing and saving it and a tugboat goes down, how do you how do you resolve that? So you would need what? Two tugboats to make sure that, that uh on e- to make sure that if one tug goes down, the other one's there, so redundancy. And yeah, it's gonna be expensive. Or you're gonna have to build a dolphin system that that beaches the ship. So maybe some of the dolphins are below water, like elevated, like like here's below water ten feet. So the ship runs up on the ten foot one crunch right it takes it, it crumple zones that if you will then the next one boom now it's slowing it down and we don't want oil breaking oil breaking so you're basically making a runaway ramp like a truck would have on a on a steep highway except for now you're coming this way so underwater ramp it up where you you know you watch how all the ships pay attention now make sure the ships are ship shaped they're ready to go out to sea um under their own power they won't make that mistake. Now, I'm going to wrap it up with this $46 million deal. That's what the owner of the company says the value of his ship is at. And so, therefore, under maritime law, that's all it's worth. $46 million, that's all you get. You get the value of the ship. But as I understand, you get the value of the ship and the cargo. So, that's another question. But this company's in federal court saying, hey, we, we kill people. We hit this. But maritime law says we can kill people when you only got to pay you the value of the ship, $46 million. And nothing to the other people. They can't touch us. You know, sailors die, tough shit, whatever. People die on the bridge, tough shit is what they're saying. We're a business. We don't care about those people. So the uh, um, $46 million and that's it. That's why I think a class action lawsuit can work. And how can you get there? Because this has been law. I've been around since 1800s or 1800 and some change, I think, this maritime law. Just do what they did to Trump. They just went back, retroactively changed laws for one year. I think it was 13 months, maybe one year only, that window. And that allowed this lady to come forward and said, oh, yeah, 30 years ago, Trump touched me in the bathroom or whatever, the closet or whatever, and he made fun of it. And that's what he got sued for, too, saying, yeah, right. I'm that good. I just, you know, I put magic tricks on her. Here's a Gemini, guys. And Geminis do that. How do I know that? I'm, I'm a freak like that. I'm a Gemini. I talk that way, and, and it's up to you to decode um, what I really mean. I, you know, I leave stuff hanging sometimes, and that's what he did. He leaves it hanging like, yeah, I don't care if you believe me or not or whatever. So he does joking like that, and that cost him another, um, what did he call <laughs> Deformation because <laughs> he made fun of it like that. And he's like, oh, now he's defending my character. Well, They open that window for one year. During that one year, just to bring her forward so they can go after the party on the right. And only for that, to to hamstring him so he can't run for presidency. That was was all about. If you look at her lawyer, you'll see, if you research her lawyer, you'll see what kind of cases she handles. And she was the one instigating this new law just to start this. And it went through. Everybody's like, oh, we see your agenda. It's going after Trump. Yeah, we we can make this law in New York. We'll make it happen. We need to leave the window open for one year. They are only doing it to go after Trump. During that time, though, it's so funny that a lot of people caught on that that law existed. And it was a one-year window. About 3,000 people, if I remember correctly in my reading, 3,000 people jumped in on that law. And then they closed the door after the one year. Closed the door saying, oh, doesn't exist anymore. I'm saying the same thing here that they just need to ask New York, tell us how you did that again. Open the books and say, Hey, you know what? Maritime law exists, but we're going to make a law that's retroactive. It goes back 150 years or whatever, 200 years, 1850. I don't know when this law came into place for this shipping stuff. Retroactively go back this, these many years 
and we're going to change it to anybody in uh, the year 2024 at uh, uh, around about this date has a right to sue on a class action lawsuit, meaning you, the public, me, the public, um, everybody's affected by this around the world, affected by this, this cargo doing this impact is allowed to do a class action lawsuit against this company and make people be made whole, including the dock workers, the, uh, the, uh, illegals on the bridge, the, uh, everybody, you know, the lady that was traumatized because she almost, her route shows that she was almost going there for a Uber, Uber drive, but the, her ride was late or otherwise she'd have been on the bridge. That's mental, that's, that's mental anguish. She should be allowed to sue. The, the time that is involved in this, all these companies, including the, the, uh, us, the public, I, I just find it amazing that the government is saying they're going to pay for this. Well, the government doesn't have any money, as we know. They're broke. They can't pay for this. They're just saying they're going to pass the buck on to us, the people. Again, that makes us the, the uh, we have our standing, if you will. The government's saying we don't have a standing. And then they're going to charge fees for this. There's so many class action lawsuits that could be done. Such as the scam about charging you for gas, and then they wind up buying, getting cops instead, instead of going back to infrastructure. They 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 change the they change their belief that infrastructure can be security, therefore it can be the cops on the road, on the highways. But we know that that's not true because you're not leaving them on those highways. You're taking the money from there to pay for those cops, but you're then using them for policing other places. Otherwise, you would see. That cop, show us the cops that you hired that took the gas money, the uh, the tax money for gases. You said you hired because it's infrastructure protection. Show us their their uh, their records. Let's see that they were actually like bridge police. You know, like the uh, the uh, bridge police, Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New York. They have jurisdictions in both states. And they just patrol the fucking bridge. And when I say jurisdiction in both states, that they actually go over each bridge, not just a bridge. It goes into each state just to... Uh, of, of jurisdiction wise of um, a few m- metrics not much and any other side not much either on each side of the state and now if they do chase somebody that jurisdiction continues you know they can still continue a hot pursuit for example but they don't you know, they don't have police powers you know on the other end of the state just just where they that's where they have police powers at um you know for the for the enforcement the uh, they don't lose their police powers because they're at the other end of the state, but they don't. They don't. They're, 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 it's it's like their jurisdiction. This uh, bridge bridge police, I call them. So you don't see that with this money. Is what I'm saying is that they they take from us. So that's like another class action lawsuit. You said it. We, you took our gas money with saying it was higher ta- gas tax to for infrastructure, and then you hired it to do policing for um, the neighborhoods. That's not what. You took the money under, so that's class action lawsuit. I'd love to be part of that class action lawsuit. Um, if any lawyers out there listening, cut me in, make me your head person, you know, on, on your lawsuit, because um, you always they always have a lead. Uh, oh shit, beautiful. Let me go forward. Mute that. Oh, I thought he had pictures. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, it's a carrier. Shit, this is them pulling up something. I thought it was the damn ship. Yeah, this is the one that's got me right there. See, that's a barge. They're the ship. I mean, the uh, the crane. But I can't tell if there's something between. Is that the other side of the crane or another barge? And this is a there's a number on it, so it looks like a barge. Um, this I've been dying to get the imagery of this. They won't get nobody else will, you know, fly a drone over there or something. Um, okay, ending the video and clap. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, class action lawsuit. Um, the company only wants to pay 46 million. That's all they think they're entitled to. Should they do the uh, ask those Letitia James or somebody to come help DC to change their laws so they can change their laws to go after this company? I'm not being facetious. I'm saying if they can do it for Trump, they can definitely do it for this company and go back retroactively, open the door for one day, 
just be cold-blooded, blatant about it. We're opening the door for one day. During that one day, yeah, a lot of people are going to have action that they're going to jump in on. But if you can zone in on it, you know, only people that are involved in the Francis Scott Key Bridge that will exist 200-plus years from now would be allowed to uh, do this lawsuit. That's funny, isn't it? Because the bridge wouldn't exist if you go retroactively. So you'd have to say the waterway that's thereabouts, whatever they called D.C. back then, around those waterways, if any um, bridge uh, bridge or materials are built, you just, you know, something real vague. And it's like, aha, because they'll try to find a way out of it. You'll just say any bridge materials. So, or, or, or human life loss, that people will be responsible for whatever the, the uh, current year's boat will be. What do you know the boat mean, dollar amount? You know, what's your, what's your boat? Hey, I got to go because I have a 12 o'clock and I think I'm cutting it, cutting it close now. So take care. Oh, I'll get a half an hour. Take care. You got the time now. Love you. Bye. It sure is a big mess. Well, then howdy neighbor. Laugh out loud. Okay. Hmm. Oh, shit. CBC. Woo. My girl likes to eat. So these, these are cargo boxes. If you don't notice them, there, there's this label on the side. These are huge-ass cargo boxes. 40-footers, I think. The ship is designed, uh, calculated with 20-footers. So you need to get half the load with 40. Let's see if it's got anything in it. Clear. We're about 30 meters from the actual wreckage site, and you can see there's still... How does she know she's 30 meters? I don't see uh, anything on there. So much twisted debris that's rest... There's my beautiful... Upright. Sting upon the Dolly cargo ship. See the dual uprights here? Mm, uh, verticals, upright, verticals. You can look, triangulate that. Remember, this part of the bridge falls down. There's a road. falls on top of the pier. That part gets pushed forward, and it falls way beyond the pier. That makes a, a angle, back angle to the structure, which gave it the torque, which gave it the twist, which put the bridge down on the other side as of the uh, pier. Right uh, other, I mean, further down. North Star. Oh, okay. I guess I'm sticking around for a second. So this is where the ships look like now currently. They're all in here. This is the current map. Keep track of them. Refresh the page. So she said the North Star. I don't give a shit about that. Let's go forward. Those heavy lift cranes. I mean, she's pointing at North Star. Of onto so they got a crane out there. Uh, there's the chamfer of the column. There's the steel that spalled off. Yeah, and it's wrapped around. Let's see here. And that's just so up here is where it just has the oh, and it's sheared there too. The gusset plate. Wow, was she had a close-up shot? It's too. Cl it's so clean when it's far away like this. Oh, look at the uh, the buckling. Look, and there's some torsion. That is, so this part is bowed, right? And then this part is crumpled up. So it tells you by this buckle, that means that the top is stationary, the right part is bent out. Like you grab the bottom leg and pull it out. You look at the steel and you can see why it would be no buckling up here. This got gusset, this plate on this side and the other side. It might be some deflection in. So the steel found is where it can bend right about here. Vantage point. You can see the small gusset plates over here to the right. Small, small on the side, but bigger on the, this face. And then that correlates to, uh, oops. Um, well, we can use to work with this. Yeah. Let's work with this for a second. Looks like a pile of metal spaghetti. It looks like a pile of metal spaghetti. What the hell's what kind of imagination is that? Um, so 
So this one peeled over. See how it folded back? That's very interesting, whatever that. I like to see that. This buckled and broke the weld right here, which again is interesting. I'm not sure what I'm looking at there. There's a connection that ripped off and not I don't think the, uh, so that would have been tagged on something and snapped off, right? Because these boxes wouldn't, wouldn't be able to, uh, they're, they're, this metal is very thin. It wouldn't be able to, uh, it would just cut through those boxes. And remember this. That, wow, that's amazing. So the perforation, I talk about it with rebar, the, you know, in failure now mode, we can, you can analyze that. And of course, the finite element pro programs don't do that. But in real life, now you can analyze that. It appears that because of your perforation, your steel, you have less material between there. It creates a perforation. And during failure, it just is able to rip it right down so cleanly. So it looks like it's sheared off. But I think we're looking at where each con each rivet I think it's probably a riveted bridge, maybe bolted, um, was located. So like in, 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 see the, see the indents? And they would line up with these. That's what, what my working theory is this right is now. Until I get a closer image. After the bridge collapse. Right. So here, um, so here's, let's let this go. Um, let me mute her. So they're impacting now. And there's a significant amount of, uh, uh, presents is this smoke from here maybe not all right so here's our break impact it's now unsupported span from here to here because this support here is now lost once it knocks that support out the unsupported span from here to here breaks in multiple places here and here as we let me see if I can frame this back so watch here to the right we want to see this flat now and as I go up further, it should when I when I keep going back a frame and it no longer raises, then we know it's flat. All right, so it's still it's still moving based on the lights moving in the background. Okay, right? Nope, still moving. Let's go back a frame so you can just watch this light appear. See that light? So it's still moving. Okay, let's go forward then. I don't have a choice. So here's the break here. I think the original. The first break is here, I think. Let's watch. Let's go forward now. So it's it's interesting too because this is holding up. The uh, it's still together. See that truss system under there? It's like this one over here. It's still together. It's going to impact the ship. I even looked at it to see if that could be my shearing action on the side of the vessel. I'll leave that open, but I still like the uh, impact right now. This this concrete as the uh, as a shearing action. I try to use it as this, and I was like, that's yeah, too convenient. I got to shear it and push it back. At the same time, like, that's eh, might, but I didn't see the metal inside there. And frankly, it'd be beautiful to see the metal in there. We better clean this up as far as, was it all just this, or was this coming down to, to uh, shear it? Well, um, process of, of a deduction, we see now, here's the shape. If we look at it, here's the shape. I could, I, could, I could screenshot this, do an overlay, and try to match it over here. And say, okay, it's in the air right now. The impact is happening. So I eliminate that this is the steel cutting into the ship at this point. This steel here, it's still up in the air. So I eliminate that. And I say, this is concrete impact. There is, this steel is nowhere near impacting the ship at this point. And I look at the structure at this point. And I say, okay, this is the bow here. So our unsupported span is here. Remember, I found the video where this is lifting up at the far end. It's going to push down and lift up the other side. So this truss system works beautifully. Hey, Georgie, he needs his attention. All right, I got another 20 minutes I can give you, but I'm going to try to end it soon. So we go down. This is pinned over here. It can't push out because of the structures there, the, the uh, concrete, the... Um, the concrete piers there with the bridge. So it's pinned. It, it's going down, but so it's pinned, meaning it's, it can rotate there. It can't push away is what I mean by pinned, meaning it can't go away. So it can only go down. As we watch, we see lights appear. Now this is much lower. See it? That's light, light in the background. It pops up. And that's the reflection there. George. George. Ah, oh, shit. George needs attention. Come on. He needs to sit behind me in my own office desk. He sits in my chair behind me. In the same chair, yes. Um, all right, so 
we're going to lose a lot of cabling here. This bridge is going to accelerate further than the collapse. The weight of it, the shock load, is going to rip the cables off of these points here. All right, they're connecting points. Not down here. So when you look in the water and you see the, 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 the those flares, uh, the thermal images they made up, part of it's cabling and part of it's trying. Hey, George, relax for a moment. There's some soot, I mean mud and stuff like that, but not not much. The way they show the image is, is uh, it can't get clarity. Good boy. He jumped from behind me now. So now you see that this one is buckling here. Watch this one here. Okay. It's going down. George, sit down. It buckled. Just that one member, that one section there. There's our, there's our separation. There's the buckle. When it does that, it also has a buckle over here. Watch this. Back. See the light change? Okay. Let's go forward. And over here we're lowering. So this is whole section here is lowering down. But it's being held up somewhat by the ship. It's got to, you know, it's got to still buckle and, and destroy this. The ship's going to come forward and change its dynamics. All right. So it's going down. Ship is still moving forward, even though we may not see it in a single frame. George, relax. That's George here purring, if you can hear him purring. So the bridge deck in relationship to this is still, still pretty good. But now the ship's going to take on this load of this truss system below, right? The supporting system. And the it's going to take on the load. And now the structure is going to be unsupported from here to here. But it has kinetic energy. It has momentum. And it's where we're going to get our breaking pop, 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 ripping from here. The deck um, connection is being stronger than the connection above. George, no. You don't press the keyboard. No. So uh, this pops it from here. Let's watch. We have the to the left. We have, the, again, the ship's taking on part of the load now. It's now becoming the pier for this. And it, it's pushing forward at the same time, which is now rotating and torquing this in a counterclockwise direction from our position. If we were looking down the bridge from, from left to right, looking down, you're standing on the bridge, you would see this part rotating counterclockwise, twisting it. All right. Now, this is pivoting off of the... Um, uh, whatever pile number that is, pure number that is out there in the water. Hey, George, I need those post them. Stop that. Actually, I don't need to post them there. Thank you. So, good job, George. So, um, the ship is taking on the load. All right, let me screenshot that for a second. So, this becomes the, the, uh, the pier right now. This is a temporary pier. Just in that moment of time, you think of stuff like a million frames per second, and then think what's going on. You start, you start seeing it, what's happening in reality. So this would be becomes uh, ship becomes a pier, and I call it intercepting loads. Becomes uh, a pier. All right. And let me give this a little bit of color here, so I would do this and maybe that. Okay. And maybe I should do this. Oops. Collapse. And I went doing a. Mm. Doing failure. Um, so that's what's going on there. And that's why we see the loads um, as we see them uh, uh, right now transferring. Let me give an arrow here. So the ship becomes a pier right then. And during, when it does that, this, this, this load, remember it's broken here, so this is already deflecting down. So our distance is increased here. Remember the buckling there has increased. That gives it that deflection. It can't hold this bridge. This, this I'm sorry, when I say bridge, it can't hold the deck. The upper truss system cannot hold the deck. And so it's going to want to pull, drop to the ground with this momentum and, and weight and kinetic energy and there you have it on that and when it pulls down it's going to integrate these two together the the left side right side we're going to get another break here but during pulling down to the right right now the other end of the structure is going up as i show in the video that i'll leave in the end end part of the video the capture here here we got material buckling and 
together, right? There's it's crushing in and, if you will, buckling, crushing in together. And this is going under tension. So there'll be a break here. There'll be a break here in the bridge deck. In the bridge deck. And you see that in the video with the thermal images or whatever they use them. The, you see this, this empty voids between the, the bottom part. That's where the bridge deck broke. And let's go for it. So now this structure here is still still acting as one, but this is pushing, it's pinning it now because it's not broken free yet. So it's, it's directing, it's keeping it in line with the pier on this side. But we're going to get a break. As this pushes forward, we're going to get a break. And this is going to shift, a break here. It's going to shift and come to an end uh, stop beyond the pier. And that's this side of the structure. Pushing it forward, that creates this bow like this in the structure, meaning this is pushed back. This is pushed back also because it's still connected in the face. The back side is going to break first. The back side will open up first, the other side of the structure, and this side will stay together. As I'm going forward, now you see the lighting on the deck. So this tells you we have some rotation I talked about. Let's go back. All right. Uh, workers on the deck, headlights, whatever. All right, so this is going down. Yeah, so that's your, your buckle material. Look how it buckled there in the curvature. So you'll know where to, you'll better locate that. What presents the curvature to us. All right, so now the ship is, now this section is going into the ship. All right, the ship is still moving forward. It's going into the ship. It's being, uh, uh, it's buckling, being ripped apart. It's failing at the um, nodal areas, which are all the gusset plates, if you will. And now we see that this is now touched down, but it's no longer flat here. Let me go back one. It's no longer going to continue. It's going to do a reversal now of the break. So it's being supported. Let's back up. You'll see the opening here. Watch this break. It's the bridge deck going down with this unsupported span from here to here. So the bridge deck is still falling, 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 falling. Let's watch right here. Right, falling, falling. Right now. Now it's pivoting. The bridge deck is no longer falling. It went through the ship a little bit. The ship's free down to no, right about there. Now it's pinned. Or let's call let me use the let me have some flexibility with pinned, all right, for you engineers out there. It's pinned and it's a rotation point. See that? And there's a rotation point. And with that said, this unsupported span, it's, it's already broken that. It's already broken in uh tension. Right? And also being torqued, uh um, rotational torque. Because this pushed forward and it just, you know, makes it easy to break when you hit it from two directions like that. Two axes, multiple axes. So here's our, let's look to the left now. This section down here. Now it's pinned. Right, not me yet. Now it's sliding. Let's back up. Let's back up. Right about there. Start sliding down. Sliding down that column, the one they're driving the cars on. And impact let's watch it so on here going back still going through the ship i mean through the this is at the pier so it's at the pier and this might be knocking over our, our uh some of the the one furthest to us this upright over here this side of it that i'm referring the dual upright george relax for a minute so now it's impact the bottom the soil over here Remember, it's only about 11 feet or so on the, on, the, on the sides of these structures. So now it's impacted because you, it won't go, hmm. okay, because now it's, it's just buckling and sliding down and consolidating and watching to the left here and comes to an end. Now you can measure the top of the structure. Let's go back measure it knowing how what it the height is from here to here and you'll know how much is out of the water you know how much is below the water which you got to lift for calculating loads now let's go to the right again this section from here to here so it's going to break multiple places one two the face out here the inner face the outer face away from us and over here and also here in the deck in the deck here now we, we go forward she's still going down but right about here we have the opening, clearly we have the opening here, and this is intention, and we're bringing an opening here now. And there's some, see the deformation of it? And let's just watch the structure here. Right there. Keep watching it. 
that's where it opens up give it a second there we go and it pulls away but this structure is falling away too so if you look at it it's 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 not just pulling away this is pulling away also multiple directions okay she's diving down fuck she's diving down to 50 feet or 50 plus feet diving into the mud all right it's diving in but our pivot point is here to the left it's on the ship at this point it's hit the cargo boxes and all watch this just pivot watch this top just pivots over this is no longer damaged it's free of being damaged as it rotates over and there's our rotation but it's still staying here let's watch this one how much it slides off the ship ah fuck all right and you could see how much it would slide off the ship when it dives in before it just comes to rest this one's already fell, fallen off and then it's going to now uh, it's fallen off the other end now it's going to rotate down and drag uh, buckle this slide it down the column and knock off oh i'm sorry knocks off the, the caps on the other end these two guys times two on the other end pug face media gave me this guys if you see it thanks pug face media all right so there's a the ship there's that rotation you saw at night and it looks like it, the brake was here and remember i said it's a rotational torque and different brakes well there's that break that happened there and this one broke on that side all right and the other piece would be hanging from here then where they both snap identically on each end i doubt that i think it's a piece up here belongs up here or it's already in the crumple zone in there again the depth the height of the bridge if you know the height of bridge you can measure this and now you know how much is below the water okay what we got here somebody with a snorkel out there no i think it's a street light that's what i would guess just look small all right there's my piece close up that i've been so crazy about um yeah that looks like it's on a barge it looks like it's cut i didn't see this so this the whole piece came up it looks like it's on a barge it looks like it's cut i don't see it yeah it's just the depth is driving me crazy and there's a ship there there's behind it so yeah they cut it there's the cut all right let's close that door now let's close that this is a piece of section they can lift up so it is one section on top of it. They still got to go in the water, which is a bitch. Oh, this is great. Oh. That's not... Oh, is it wood cribbing holding it? What the hell? Don't go away yet, lady. Yeah, beautifully cut. Um, they're getting away with it. They're stumbling into it, as I call it. You're stumbling into perfection until you don't. So that's that member that would have been up top. This is the bridge deck I said that when it fell down, it fell in line with the with the pier. And there it is. But this bridge deck over here, the other half of it, way beyond the pier. It's way out there. You know, I don't know the depth of this. It might be 50 feet away. I'm looking close to us, but significant. Here's the pier back here. And here's the other side of the bridge deck way up here. For scale, these, they're the bays. You can probably scale it. It is on an angle. All right, there's a ship we will ne probably never see again. It's, it's allowed. And they're using one tug. That's interesting. The one tug. I am glad that they're not having anyone on top of the bridge when they do that, though. Um, it would be ironic to see them impact the bridge with the tugs. Because remember, the tugs can lose power, too. Um, what we got here? Oh, so that tug, as I as I see it, that tug is using, um, it's pushing. Some tugs uh, will just be push-pull, one in the front, one in the back, and have like a, a, a line tag to it. And so the ship's under power and steering, and they're the backup. Um, they, you'll see it with the slack in the, in the cable. So somebody says, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't care what you, whatever you say. Your, your mind is nuts. Um, if it's slack in there, they're not, they're not, they're, they're, they're just following along. And you'll see it. They'll be quite often. There'll be slack in, the, in there, which identifies the ship is navigating on its own, and it's just tagged to the ship just in case the ship gets out of a needs a little little assistant rear, front and rear. There'd be a rope there and, a sh and one in the back off of these tugs. And in this case, it was pushing 100%. So it was doing everything. It's the whole rudder. It's the whole system. 
So if the tug was a uh, axe up, well, there we go, another impact. The safer way would be of tugging the front and tugging the back. And maybe if there's a ship, it's a barge. Of course, the can doesn't have power like that. But, um, but if uh, front one in the front, one in the back, at least you got it. You know, it has to go two two tugs to go down to to uh, cause a problem. And these tugs are pretty badass. They're pretty fast. I can imagine tugging the back. You know, hauling ass up to the front, depending on if they got thrusters or not. And this is the cut that we looked at, the impact of the concrete. I just don't have it as that part of that truss system was on there that came down here cutting this because the, it's from the blue backwards. If it cut down, like just straight from the top down, well, I wouldn't see this whitish area, if you will. It would just be down and I'd see peeled out steel down below. But that's not presented that way. So that's my bias. Bias or anything that you make a conclusive file with. And that's my bias. Oh, beautiful. They're right on the, the, these cargo boxes. Oh, I've been wanting to get close up to these cargo boxes and see what this looks like up here. So that's the pivot point. You're looking at it. It's amazing. Uh, you know, it didn't shear right through these as it pivoted. It crushed it down to zero. I mean, look, that's like zero. But it's amazing that it didn't uh, shear them in half. It's beautiful. Um, cargo box, cargo box. I think that's a cargo box just blown apart. Okay, we can hear what he says. 28 years. This is the first time I've ever seen anything of this enormity um, that has closed a port down for this uh, amount of time. And realistically, there's no timeline. There's your, your dolphin. I like saying dolphin. You know, I like playing with words. Dolphin. Um, oh, tug. Uh, uh, this is a joke for somebody. Coming to the stage, fresh from California. Visiting is from California is the Dolly, is Dolly. Okay, coming to the stage, fresh from California. Welcome, Dolly, people. I would do it louder, but uh, some of you guys know what I'm inferencing to. All right, there's a pivot point. Amazing. Remember, it's in the bottom now, bottomed out at that point with that load on it, and it's just tagged up there. It's just stuck all up in here, but here's our pivot point. As it rotates down, all oh, right, seeing it at a million frames per second, as it rotates down, it possibly cuts. But if it did that, I would see steel butted against here. So it would be closer in here is where I would see that steel that slowly was ripping. Imagine if you could still keep rotating it. That's where you would look for the extra steel. And there's a the tug. And there's the McLean Baltimore. And that's that angle I talked about. There's the angle. It's on the other side too. There's a ship there. So that pushed, uh, let's see, one side pushed that side out. And this side, I said, broke on this side. And then broke on the front face side we see in the video. And I gave that torque, that rotational torque we see on this. And the far end, it couldn't get the rotational torque as much, but it did, you know, break some cop, break the pier down there. The two, two, uh, two stacks of that. And there we go. And now if you follow this down and you knew the measurements, you'd be able to tell exactly where this angle goes, the angle of incidence, down in the, in the bay without even going on the ship, without even getting in water there. You just follow this down, you know, you know the depth, you know the width. You'll be able to calculate where, where it intersects, where it bottoms out. You can use the top even. I like the bottom better. That was a beautiful shot. That's a recycle image. All right, take care, guys. Got to go now because now I have two minutes to my conference.